and welcome to Beauty Rehab. I am Morgan Schick, and I am really excited to talk to you guys today. Beauty Rehab is a show where we are going to pull apart everything you know about beauty, about anti-aging, about how you rock your most beautiful self every single day in the mirror. I am Morgan Schick. I was a Ford model for 25 years. I then became a makeup artist because all that heavy every day of makeup was ruining my skin. And I figured, you know what? If my skin's getting ruined, then everybody's skin is getting ruined wearing all this makeup. We have got to figure out a better way to look beautiful, feel beautiful, get the life we want, and not let makeup destroy our skin. So I became a makeup artist, and then I wrote a book, and then I was the... um, spokesperson for Laura Mercier Cosmetics, and started doing a lot of TV, did my own makeup on HSN for 11 years, so I've sold it, I've created it, I've been the model. It's a very different perspective than just being a makeup artist. When you're a makeup artist, you put makeup on people's faces, but when you're a model, you wear the makeup, you it goes into your skin, it causes your pimples, it makes you look older, it sinks into your fine lines. So I love this perspective of knowing how to apply it and make you look beautiful, but also knowing what that, what those products, what those ingredients do to your skin today and your skin's future. So I am so grateful to be on the Lifestyle Talk Radio Network. And when you listen and call in to 888-454-3378, you get your questions answered. You will be able to use my 30 years now of experience as a model, as a makeup artist, as creating products. I've been in the labs. I know what alpha hydroxys do to your skin. I know what pigments do. I know what titanium dioxide and all these different ingredients in sunscreen do. So I want you to call me, 888-454-3378. I also want you to follow me on Twitter, Morgan at Morgan Schick, and it's Morgan, M-O-R-G-E-N-S-C-H-I-C-K, at Morgan Schick, at Morgan Schick on Instagram, on Facebook, and... Today, I was on Good Morning America. I was on Good Morning America as a beauty expert, as a skincare and an anti-aging expert, because we did a story, or Good Morning America did a story on why we lie about using Botox, why we lie and other, and other anti-aging procedures and other beautifying procedures that are out there now, and why we do it. And so I was on Good Morning America. I hope you caught it. And not only do I think this was such a great subject, but I think that it's much a much deeper subject that I want to speak to today is not just about whether you're lying to your husband and your spouse or your partner about your Botox, but why we do it and how you can navigate your aging and your beauty to feel like you can own it. I guess when you're pushing 50 like I am, you really start to think about this is something you cannot get. You cannot get this perspective when you're 25. I know that because when you're 25, you're arrogant. You think you're going to live forever. You think you're going to look like you look or similar to you look forever and that you're not going to care about your aging. But I am telling you right now, when you have 45 as a woman for sure and now more as a man, you're going to care about how you age because you're going to still feel young inside. You are still going to feel relevant, like you are doing a good job in your work or you are getting the love you want, or you all this, all of the things that you thought would happen with your life, I hope happen. But when you see your reflection in the mirror start to change, you had better already have your plan B, what you're going to do to take care of your skin, what you're going to do to take care of your aging, your hair, your teeth, your body. Because you still want the life you want. 
And I do not want you to forget that I've told you this. I want you to get involved. And guess what? Don't get crazy. I did this last night when um, on Friday when I was called by Good Morning America and asked about this. I said, oh, everyone, everyone lies about it. People, women have been lying about their age since the beginning of recorded history. Why? Because if you are old, you were thought to be undesirable. You could no longer have children. So what were, what's your worth? My mother, you know, I've been with my mom um, for the last couple of weeks because I'm in California and I'm back in my hometown and I'm with my mom and my mom said something to me the other day that really hit home, hit home for me because she said, you know, Morgan, when you get old, you become invisible. And it broke my heart because I thought, Mom, you're so not invisible. I want to soak up every minute of you. I want to be with you all the time. I want my children to have your imprint. I want to have your imprint. You know, it was my eight, my dad's 80th birthday, and I wanted to spend every minute with him and really let him be a part of my children's life and my life. And and but then I realized how busy I am every day. We've got volleyball, we've got soccer, we've got all this stuff going on, and I see how she felt invisible. And I see how hard it might be to think that you're still relevant. So I want you to care about yourself your entire lifespan. I don't want you to be arrogant to what you look like when you're 25 and then at 45 get desperate and do something crazy like tremendous amounts of Botox or fillers or a facelift too early or any of that. And that being said, I am not judging anyone for doing anything to themselves that makes them look in the mirror and feel better about choices they make, but your choices matter. So if you are doing crazy treatments or a facelift at 35, I don't want you to think for one second that if you get a facelift, you're going to be any happier. I want you to always care about what your skin looks like. I want you to always care about whether you're showing a bright smile, you know, beautiful, bright white teeth. I don't care if they're crooked or straight. Let's just make them white. Use a white strip. It doesn't cost a lot. So I want you to call me in the next segment, in this segment. I'm going to be taking your phone calls all the time at 888-454-3378. If you are trying Botox, if you are scared about Botox, I want to talk to you about Botox because, A, Botox is not for everyone. There's also Dysport, which is a derivative of Botox that is not a neurotoxin that works for a lot of women. So, but let's talk about the expense. Let's talk about what you can do to use these anti-aging treatments, but not go crazy. When I did the Good Morning America, I, I posted it on Instagram and I said, you know, I use Botox for the 11 lines because I think the 11 lines are not about aging. I think they make you look like you're mad. And I don't want you to look like you're mad, but fine lines around your eyes and laugh, laugh lines, I think are awesome. So that's just my opinion. So when you're talking about, you know, $1,000 for Botox, I want you to know that I don't want you to do Botox all over your face. I want you to know that less is more. Hashtag less is more. Hashtag don't get crazy. But care about your image. And in the next, in the following segments today, we're not only going to talk about how you can navigate the price of all these things, but also how you can have this conversation with your spouse or your significant other that you want to try these things. And also how you talk to your friends about them and what you should be doing at the drugstore to get the same effects. Nothing is going to stop and freeze your face like Botox does. But there are a lot of things that you can do that are much cheaper than using a neurotoxin to stop that aging process. I want to talk about that in the fourth segment today. So I want you to stay with me through this hour because we are going to break down why we lie about it, what it does to your soul when you do lie about things, 
how you can do it for a nominal price and what you need to do every day to care about your aging. This is the Lifestyle Talk Radio Network. I am Morgan Schick. This is Beauty Rehab. I don't think that you need to go to Beauty Rehab, but I want you to stay with me in Beauty Rehab because there's a lot for us to learn, break down, and learn. And I will tell you all the secrets I've learned from the last 30 years as a Ford model, beauty expert, creator of Morgan Schick Cosmetics. Stay with me, 888-454-3378. This is Lifestyle Talk Radio Network. I'm Morgan Schick. We'll be right back. I'm excited to be with you today, and today I am coming off of having been on Good Morning America this morning, talking about why women lie about doing so hot. And the biggest quote I said was that there's only one thing worse than aging, and that's actually looking like you care about your aging because it makes you look desperate. If everybody can tell what you're doing to your face or to augment your breast or whatever it is you're doing, if people can tell you and your eye is very perceptive, something is wrong, it makes you immediately look insecure. It makes you look like you're being shallow. You care about your vanity. Meanwhile, it's such a double-edged sword because we live in a visual society, everybody's doing a selfie on Instagram, they're on Facebook, everybody's getting their picture taken 10 times more than they ever did, videos are flying around everywhere, YouTube is like crazy, so you better care about what you look like, but yet, if you actually look like you care, you're a narcissist, so it's kind of a, you know, no-win situation for all of us, but my entire brand is about showing you how to invisibly take care of yourself, make yourself look better, get the life you want, get the love you want, get the job you want. Employers will Google you now. They know what you look like. Be someone who looks like they care about what they, the image they present to the world. Be someone who takes pride in their appearance. You don't have to look like a supermodel. You do have to look like you take a shower, that you comb your hair, that you brush your teeth. These are basic things that people should do. So I want to talk about that. First of all, I want to take a caller. I've got, I believe it is it uh, Lakin or like Lakin? Is your name Lakin? <laughs> Lakin, yes. Lakin. Oh my gosh, it's such a pretty name. I've never heard that name before. Thank you for calling. Well, thank Tell you for having me. me. Thank you. What do you think of this subject matter? What does this mean to you? Your image. Um, I think it's. I think it's very important. Your image, you know, especially like you said with job interviews and things like that, and how you present yourself. You know, um, you know, if you take care of yourself and you know you care about what you look like, somebody's going to be you know more apt to you know confront you or you know to try to talk to you versus someone you know who really does it you know they kind of shy off from you know they feel like they're drawing attention to themselves so you know if you you know if you take care of yourself people are going to be you know more apt to to come to you and talk to you or be interested in you know um you know what what kind of abilities you have you know with how you present yourself that's right so what do you do what do you what is your first thing you do to take care of yourself, to to upgrade your own appearance? Like, and well, what's the comes, first thing you do? When it comes to my own appearance, um, the big thing for me that stands out when it comes to me is um, – is you know my first of all my face you know taking care of my face and um for a long period of time you know, i had a lot of trouble with acne and um you know you always feel like when you're talking to someone that they're just staring right at you know your acne and everything you know uh you know kind of kind of like you know self-confidence and um the biggest thing for me was just you know every night i learned that it's a big deal to you know take off all that makeup that you you wear and 
you know, let your let your skin breathe because, you know, when you're putting all that makeup on top of acne, you know, it it only gets down in there and makes it worse. So, you know, for me, it was first of all taking care of my skin, you know, and then next working, you know, on my hair. My hair is real big. It's kind of 80s-like, and, uh, you know, it, it doesn't want to tone down any. It's real curly. So, you know, keeping it, you know, looking nice as well, and, you know, it's, you know, the rest of, you know, my body and the clothing is stuff that I wear. So, Lakin, can I go back to um, the acne? So, when let me ask you a question. When people looked at you, in mm-hmm. your heart, did you always think they were staring at your acne and your or your acne scars, no matter what you did to the rest of your face? Absolutely. Did you feel they were? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I always felt like that because, um, for me, it was, uh, you know, a big thing. Every time I looked in the mirror, you know, that's that's the first thing that I saw. So I immediately thought that that's the first thing that everybody else saw when they looked at me, you know, because, you know, it brought me down, you know, so I figured if, ever, if I'm looking at it and that's the first thing I see, then so is everybody else. And that is that is so sad for me that you wasted any time right. focusing on that one thing because you are such a part, a big part of all of your, your just you're all, you're not one thing, you're not your acne, you're not your acne scars, and yet, for some re- reason, we will let one thing that we don't think is perfect about ourselves take us down. Right. And now you realize how much heartache you left on the table you had in your heart because of that. And yes, I, I agree. I want you to know, first and foremost, that I know you are so much more than that and that I am sure if I met you face-to-face right now, I would never even have noticed that. (laughs) I would be looking at bright eyes. I would be looking at curly, fantastic hair that I I know (laughs) I've struggled with and loved. So I want you to know right now that I don't ever want you to focus on that again because I learned it that – Makeup just makes it worse. And then right. anyone you know doesn't wash their face at night, it is the dumbest thing they can ever do because it is my <laughs> number one beauty secret. Number one. Right. Don't yes. ever touch that pillow and with makeup on your face and don't touch your face because the pimples you get with your own bacteria-ridden fingers will spread it all over. Right. And that is my num- number one secret is that. I yes. said it a thousand times, and I will say it a thousand more, that the <laughs> delicate tissue on your face has to be washed at night. Now, I want to ask you a question. Do okay. you use, do you still, because when you've had acne, we tend to over-process our face. We start we start to over-chemical it, over-strip it, over-alcohol, over proactive it. And then it dries out and your skin produces more sebum to help moisturize that over-dried and processed skin. Do you wash your face like in, in, the, in the morning or do you just rinse it and put a moisturizer on? Um, I, I will actually wash it, you know, in the nighttime and, and put that moisturizer on in the nighttime. Um, but in the like in the morning time i actually have a beauty secret of my own um that i figured out and and you're gonna think i'm crazy for this but um it's actually a funny story um i just had a recent family member you know pass away and you know i said i I just really don't i don't want to go to this funeral and you know my makeup is going to be running everywhere and you know it's it's just going to be bad you know um so i actually um started to use um the cornstarch, and that sounds corn crazy. Starch, which is powder. Yes, uh, you know, I started putting that on, and I noticed a big difference. Um, oh at, my you know, gosh! My skin. <laughs> uh, oh, it was very. Right, I want you to stay with me at the beginning of my next. Can you wait through the commercial, everyone? This is Morgan Sick at Lifestyle Talk Radio Network eight 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 four five four three three seven eight. I'm going to keep Lakin on. Call me back and uh, call us in the next segment. But I want to talk to Lakin more about her course of secret because I know that secret and I want you to stay with us. We'll be right back. 888 Lakin, stay on the pl- stay on the line if you can. We'll see you soon.
I'm Gordon Sick, and this is Beauty Rehab. I'm really happy that you are joining me today because today I was on Good Morning America, and we were talking about the segment was about why people lie about their first loss. And I really, before I take a call, I'm going to take a call right now. Um, I just wanted to talk about the lie part. I don't lie about it. I have had Botox um, in one side of my eye, actually, for the last three years. I, I don't do it laterally, bilaterally. I do it because I have one side of my eye that pulls, and it actually gives me a headache. But the bonus of it is that I don't feel like I make that um, scowly look. And the scowly look is not about age. The scowly look is that when if you ever see the movie um, Wizard of Oz, the witch in the Wizard of Oz is so scary. And the biggest reason is she's got this really bad number 11 sign in the middle of her face, and she just looks like she's so mad. And I just think of that as, like, the ultimate scary witch look is that you've got that mean eye face. And... I don't want to have that mean eye face, and I definitely don't want it to be a permanent mean eye face. So if you, if someone comes up to me, and I do a lot of beauty consulting now, I consult for celebrities who are doing new shows, I do different TV shows, I do from, you know, world-class athletes to models to actresses, I help them reach their most beautiful potential as being a Ford model and a makeup artist and someone who's made their own, my own makeup line. I have this information that I want to give and share. but And I really, really pride myself on that you will never know that I am helping you. I'm going to show you how to be your most beautiful self, but invisibly, selfly, so no one knows. So it is truly your decision whether you want people to know that you do Botox or Juvederm or whatever. But I don't want you to lie about because you think it's going to diminish your beauty or your credibility. That's not my point. My point is you can tell the world whatever you want to tell, but don't let it take from your self-esteem that you think you are less than because you do Botox. You think that your husband or your partner won't love you as much because you are caring about your aging. I want you all to be honest with the fact that we live in a visual society and you need to care about your aging. You need to care about what you show the world. I think you need to, you still need to be a great person and kind and loving, but we live in a visual society, so I want you to care about it. So don't lie because you think it's going to diminish your credibility. Lie because it's just your business is totally fine with me. But, I mean, I don't know. Lying to me is just its just too hard to remember what the lies are, so I don't do it because I have a terrible memory and I don't want to lie about things. But if that's your – it's your prerogative, but don't do it because it, it, your beauty routine thinks that you need to be perfect because you don't. Okay, I've got – I'm going to say – I've got the cool names today. Um, is it Atia? It is Atia. Hi. Oh, God, guys, thank you so much for calling and for holding for me. Hi, how are you today? Hi, Warren, how are you? I'm fantastic. I was on Good Morning America today, and I think that was helpful to all women out there. Yes, right. very much so. I know. So, okay, tell me what you've got going on. Tell me, are you living your most beautiful life? I am trying my best to live my most beautiful life in my early, late 30s, and I recently lost about 45 pounds. I went from a size 16 all the way down to a size 6. The problem is, is that I literally There's had no to problem. recycle. Stop, 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 stop. There's no problem. That's not a problem. Congratulations. Can you look in the mirror right now and say, there's no problem. This is, there's no this, problem. I don't even know what you're going to ask me, but there's no problem. I'm so proud of you. I am I'm very being heavier, but you are healthier, unless you, like, did something nefarious to get skinny. I'm sure you are healthier, no. and I want you to just soak that in for a second. Then we'll deal with whatever okay. the issue. It's, it's, there could be an issue, but there's no problem. Okay, there's no All problem. Right, go on. <laughs> so there's no problem. I'm so proud of you. Okay, go. I, What's up? I needed some advice really just on starting over. I'm a single mom, three kids. I really have not been at this weight since before I had my kids. 
and I had to recycle almost everything in my closet because I couldn't fit it. So right. my question really is, is, like, I need to redo everything. Okay. I, I work on Wall Street. I, I work in a professional environment, so I need to get a wardrobe that will allow me to be at work but still allow me to be a mom at the same time. I'm just kind of caught because I haven't been shopping in years, and now I have almost no clothes. <laughs> okay. Here's the thing. This is a fantastic problem to have, and here's the even better thing. I know you have a bunch of friends in your work environment who are probably your size now or your old size. Unfortunately, no, hun. I'm the only female in the office. I know, but I know you've got friends. You might have church friends. You might have friend friends. You might have you – might, you've got to know someone who – is living, I mean, in a consignment kind of, I want you to think of it as in a consignment thing where you have friends, everyone who's got a wardrobe is sick of it. Whether you've lost 10 pounds, 50 pounds, or you've never lost one pound, everyone is sick of something in their wardrobe. But what you're sure. sick of, I think is really fantastic. And I want you to use your network to share and have them share with you. I do this all the time. I give my clothes away or even lend them, lend them away or my bags to my sister, to my friends, and then I borrow from them. And I want you to use your, your group of people. I'm sure you have, most of us have never thought about the fact that if I'm sick of my wardrobe or I don't fit into my wardrobe, I am sure you have 20 pieces in your closet that you're sick of or will never really run into. Am I right? Yeah, I do have a couple of friends that I could probably share about the ideas off back and forth with. Well, I think that, I mean, I just want you to think about that. Once you think about it and you start walking around with that mindset, you will see, and if you have conversations with different women that you have in your life or friends, sisters, cousins, whatever, you will see that you can have a great little swap going, swap, swap wardrobe going, and it will come to you, I promise you. Because what oh, cool. you just did for yourself is so magnificent. I want you to look in the mirror every day and know how proud you are. It's hard. And I am. <laughs> Thank you Thanks, for Morgan. Time. You gotta go. You gotta go. I hope you call me again and tell me what's going on in your life. I'm Morgan Chip. This is Beauty Rehab. I love being with you. Uh, come back often. Morgan Chip at Morgan Chip. Lifestyle Talk Radio. Eight 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 four five four three three seven eight.